This video is sponsored by the following people. Please click the links in the description below. So after the forging, you want to make sure that your grain structure, your metal is in the best condition for grinding, heat treating, and for giving you good toughness, balance with the hardness that you want to achieve. So first of all, we're going to do a normalizing cycle. We're going to do everything in the induction heater today. So normalizing is going to be at a slightly higher temperature, around 950, for example. Then we're going to do a grain refining, fine corn glue in English. We're also going to use the induction heater on this one, and that's basically just going slightly above magnetic and then back down so the grain structure if this is the old grain basically like a large hexagonal grain you heat it up really quick in the induction forge and that will make that you form from the existing structure from the old grain you will form austenite you will form new grains basically in all the most energetically favorable spots which usually are these these corners so the new grains will start growing here they will grow out and then you will have several new grains within your old grain and that is how the grain is refined and afterwards if we reach the temperature of austenization we go back down so on the way back down actually the grain forms again in a new different way so you will have a much finer grain structure especially if you do this two or three times you'll have as fine of a grain as possible and the induction heater is perfect because the faster you heat up the steel especially in the range between 500 and 800 degrees celsius the finer the grain will be maybe you can imagine that if you heat it up very slowly the grains will not form all at the same time but there will just be one that is favored more and that will start to grow and eat up the other areas basically so the faster you heat up the more new grains per old grain you will have You can't compare it to normalizing in a gas forge because you can't really hold the entire steel at the same temperature. So I just move through the coils very slowly, bring increment by increment to the right temperature and then let it air cool back down. We're gonna do the same thing again now, but this time we're not heating up to normalizing temperature, but we're actually just going from magnetic to non-magnetic. So we're gonna be just in the transition. This time we don't wanna dissolve any of the carbon in the structure. We only wanna refine the grain. So this is not normalizing, this is grain refining. I do this thermally because uh, thermomechanically it's very hard to control if you forge by hand. And that way I am sure that I have a very good grain structure to start with and that I get good toughness at the hardness that I want. After we have the contour ready, we will go and grind in the rough bevels so we can go into heat treatment. When I grind the rough bevels and I have a GOMAI construction, I need to make sure that the center, the core steel, the Apex Ultra, is aligned in the center. So during forging, actually, I'm bringing in some pattern very consciously, so I will actually forge a little bit rougher than needed. So I have a little bit, some waves, some activity going on in the steel, but it can't be too much. Otherwise I would not have the Apex Ultra in the center. When I do the rough grind before heat treatment, I always like to grind until I start seeing the nickel line on the side. You can usually see it just by grinding, but if you want to be sure, just dip it in some ferric chloride or any other acid and the nickel will come out as a bright line and you will be sure if you have the core steel in the center. Whenever you're starting out, you want to learn a new grind, you want to perfection it, you want to make it your own. It's always three parameters that I look at the most. One is the spine thickness. If you want to get better, spine thickness is something that you always have to take care of. Not only the thickness in one place, but also, also how it changes towards the front, so the taper. Second parameter is thickness behind the edge. How thick is your knife right behind the sharpened edge? And the third parameter that you should look at very consciously is what are the angles of your bevel and that is going to change with the height of the grind with the spine thickness and with the front 
So it's basically defined geomet uh, geometrically. You see the nickel line on both sides. I'll do a quick edge, then you also see yeah. what's going on. So right now we've pre-ground the blade. I did a quick etch on the blade to make sure that my bevels and my cutting edge are aligned, that my bevels are the same height and the cutting edge. Uh, so the Apex Ultra Core is right in the middle. I've also done pre-ground the tang and got the fit up here. We're even gonna heat treat this blade that we made out of the Go My Billet just using the induction heater. Full disclosure, this is not my typical process. I usually use a fluidized sand bed for heat treating, but I wanna show that with an induction heater, you can actually force weld, you can forge a blade to shape, you can actually make a very high performing blade and you can also get heat treatment in a reasonable manner with this induction heater. And there's more to it than just hardening. We're also going to do the normalizing cycle, some grain refining and the DET anneal only using the induction heater, which I think is pretty cool because this has no emissions, it's affordable. So if you, even if you're forging in a basement, gas for example is not an option, coal is not an option. And with an induction heater you can make it happen. There's minimum noise, there's no emissions, there's no gas, no harm of suffocating from carbon monoxide poisoning which is pretty cool. <laughs> Next up, we're gonna heat treat this knife also just using the induction heater. So I'm gonna start slowly warming up the spine and then I'm gonna flip around the knife and use this taco induction coil to just heat up the edge band, basically get it up to the right temperature and then quench in oil. All right, let's go. <laughs> so I didn't quench the spine and also not the transition of the tang um, just so that part stays softer and I didn't even heat it up to the temperature so we're not going to have a problem with any stress rises here in this area and you won't, you, you won't risk cracking or getting any troubles in this area. This video focuses on forging a knife, a GoMai blade on the induction heater. So we're not gonna go through all the details of making a hidden tang handle. There's plenty of other videos which show that and we're just gonna show you the finished knife afterwards. So where will you find high performance kitchen knives like device anglers? They are available at moderncooking.com. Moderncooking.com is the best place to shop for high performance kitchen equipment. They stock an absolutely massive range of kitchen tools, including collector's edition knives from the most prominent knife makers in Europe and beyond. You can get sharpening whetstones to keep them nice and sharp, but also protect your knives from dulling like professional chopping boards. Some very stylish kitchen tools like this titanium fish spatula, and of course, all your professional cookware are here too. All the links for this product are in the description, so make sure you check them out. Thank you to Modern Cooking for sponsoring this video. Extra thank you as well to Clark Knives and Multi-Tool Products Europe. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you have any questions about induction forging or how to make a knife like this, just let us know in the comments. Thank you for watching this video. If you're interested in comparison of different heat treatment systems, check out this other video over here.